Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. You have found me on an especially dreary day here in the Midwest, but it's actually my favorite kind of day. All I want to do is grab a project, my most comfortable chair, a hot drink, and watch true crime until the sun comes back out. Now if that sounds like an ideal day for you, I have the absolute perfect project. My friends, I am excited to share my Lamia Wrap. The Lamia Wrap is a beginner friendly Tunisian crochet shawl pattern. It starts with just three stitches on your hook and continues to grow, featuring the Tunisian simple stitch as well as the Tunisian honeycomb stitch patterns. I adore this project for beginners because it is way easier than it looks and it's definitely the kind of project that you can fall into, enjoy the rhythm, and just watch it continue to grow. I'm super excited not only to share the pattern but also a step-by-step -step tutorial for anybody interested in Tunisian crochet. If you're down for all of that, why don't you hit subscribe and stay tuned for this video. Before we jump into the Lamia Wrap though, we do need to pay some bills starting with our video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for the curious and the creative. Millions of members visit this video workshop platform to learn everything from illustration to design, even how to run your small business and crush it at social media. I had the pleasure of filming a Skillshare Originals class called Modern Crochet Essential Skills and Getting Started. And since that class debuted just over a month ago, we have about a thousand students and lots of really positive reviews. I drop by every couple of days to check the reviews and make sure people are enjoying the class. And it feels like a little pat on the back how nicely people have been receiving it. Let me share a couple of the reviews that have stood out to me. This one from Amy is just a few days ago. She said, I can easily admit that I can follow Tony's instructions. I understand what she's saying and I've enjoyed following along with this tutorial. Elizabeth says, excellent class. Tony is an incredible instructor that went at just the right pace for me. Highly recommend. And then this one from Dominique says, I loved this class. Perfect projects for beginners and excellent teacher. Very clear and interesting. Thank you. Now this class and thousands more are available on demand when you upgrade to the premium membership. If you're ready to explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in your own creativity, hop on over to Skillshare. As a special treat, the first 1,000 subscribers to click the Skillshare link below will receive a one month free trial of the premium membership. Big thanks to Skillshare for their ongoing support and thank you for watching this video. You're really the reason why I get to stay on this platform. As always, we have to recognize our cup of caffeine sponsor. Today is a tea day because in case you can't tell, I'm a little stuffy. This cold has been lingering for like six days, so please just pray for your girl. Today Today's cup of caffeine sponsor is Jean Hagen Hendrick. When donating, Jean said, you are my perfect teacher. Thank you so much. I have found my Crojo again. And if you're not familiar, Crojo is like your crocheting mojo. It's the spirit that gets you into stitching and sometimes we can lose it. So I'm so grateful, Jean, that I was part of you getting back to crocheting. Now, if you are watching this and enjoy my channel and want to support my content, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you out in my next video. Now, without further ado, here's the Lay Me A Wrap. To make our Lay Me A Wrap, we'll need just a few supplies. The first supply is going to be about 580 yards of Aran weight yarn. Now, Aran weight is a category four, but it is slightly heavier than the traditional worsted weight yarn. The original sample of the Lamia wrap was made with Ken Yarn's Foggy Aran base. This yarn is 70% superwash merino wool, 20% alpaca, and 10% nylon. It's beautifully soft and fluffy, and it blooms gorgeously in this project. Now, if you can't get your hands on Ken Yarn's Foggy Aran base, you can also substitute any worsted weight yarn. I would just recommend making a gauge swatch and changing your hook size as necessary. Speaking of hooks, we'll also need a six and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet hook with a 32 inch cord. Now you can see I have a slightly shorter cord and that's because I'm doing a demonstration here. Once you have your yarn in your hook, you'll also want a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. The last thing you'll need is blocking supplies. You'll want to wet block your projects at the end and you can take a look at the video that just popped up in the top right hand corner for how to wet block your projects. Now let's get started. The first step is to create a slip knot and place that slip knot on the hook and then we'll chain three. So yarn over your hook, pull up a loop for one, here's two, and here's three. We're then going to flip our chain over and find these back bumps of our chain. We're going to pull up a loop in the back bump of the second chain and the third chain. And then to do our return pass for our foundation, we'll yarn over and pull through one for chain one. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through 
two again, and that completes our foundation or row one. Here in row two, we're gonna start with a Tunisian simple stitch in the next stitch. So the loop on our hook counts as a stitch, so we're gonna skip this first vertical bar, and we'll find this second vertical bar, insert our hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. From there, we'll want to yarn over our hook, and that's going to be our increase, and then we'll work our final stitch. So we'll rotate our work towards us, and we'll see that we've got a front loop and a back loop of our final stitch. We'll wanna insert our hook under both of those loops. Make sure you don't lose this yarn over. Insert your hook under both of those loops of your last stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. You now have four loops on your hook at the end of the forward pass of row two. We'll then yarn over, pull through one for a chain one, then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We now have one loop left on our hook, so row two is complete. For row three, we're gonna start with a Tunisian purl stitch. So remember the loop on our hook counts as a stitch, so we're skipping this first vertical bar, we're finding this second vertical bar. For our purl stitch, we're gonna bring the yarn to the front of the hook, insert our hook under that stitch, bring the yarn to the back, yarn over, and pull up one loop. You'll know you did this right if you've got this little purl bump in the front, this little horizontal bar that's going over the front of your stitch. From here, we're going to simple stitch one. Our simple stitch is going to be our yarn over. So if we look closely, we can see the front leg and the back leg of our yarn over. The back leg is kind of hiding back here, and the front leg is right here. We're going to simple stitch the front leg of that yarn over. So insert under the stitch, yarn over, and pull up the loop. Now that simple stitch is complete. We're gonna follow that with a yarn over for our increase, which will always be on this side of our work, on the left side of our work. And then we're gonna find the two loops of our edge stitch. So there's the front and the back. Insert our hook under both of those loops. Yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have five loops on your hook. We're going to yarn over, pull up one loop, and complete our return pass. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, until there's one loop left on your hook. And that completes row three. For row four, we're gonna simple stitch one, purl one, and simple one. So we're going to simple stitch one, purl the next stitch, and simple the yarn over. Follow that with a yarn over, and work our edge stitch. So here at the end of row four, we have six loops on our hook. Then our return pass, chain one, yarn over, pull through two, two, and two until there's one loop left on our hook. Now to move on to row five, we're going to purl one and simple one two times. So we're going to purl the second vertical bar. Remember yarn is to the front, insert under the bar, yarn to the back, yarn over. If you need to, grab onto that horizontal bar there and pull the stitch slightly away from the hook so you can pull that loop through. So there's your purl one. We're going to simple this next stitch, purl the following stitch, yarn to the front, insert, yarn to the back, yarn over, pull through, and simple the following stitch, which is our yarn over. Yarn over, and work our final stitch. That's the end of our forward pass, and we will chain one, yarn over, pull through two, two, and two, until there is one loop left on our hook. Wonderful. And now we're on row six, which is going to be Tunisian simple stitch one and purl stitch one two times. So simple, this next stitch, Purl the following stitch, yarn to the front, insert, yarn to the back, yarn over, pull through. So there's simple one, purl one, one time, and then we'll simple one, purl one, again, and we follow that with simple one, which is our yarn over. So we're gonna work that with a Tunisian simple stitch, yarn over, and work our last stitch, making sure we're catching both loops. There we go. 
So that's the end of row six for the forward pass. And now our return pass, chain one, then yarn over, pull through two, two, and two. All the way back until you have one loop left on your hook, just like that. So we can start to see that honeycomb stitch pattern starting to poke through, but as we continue with our project, it'll become a lot more distinct. Here in row seven, we're going to purl one and then simple one until we reach the last stitch. So purl the next stitch. So remember, we're skipping this first vertical bar. We're working under this next vertical bar. Insert your hook under that bar after bringing the yarn to the front, yarn to the back, yarn over, pull through. So there's purl one, followed by simple one, purl one, simple one, purl one. We're going to simple one, which happens to be the yarn over from the previous row. Now we've reached our last stitch, so we're going to yarn over and work that last stitch, making sure we get under both loops. Chain one to start your return pass, then yarn over, pull through two, until there's just one loop left on your hook. This next row is basically going to be the opposite of the previous row. This is row eight, which starts with a simple one, and purl one, until we get to our last two stitches. So there was a simple, and there's a purl. Here's a simple, and a purl. Now our last two stitches are gonna be our yarn over from the previous row, and our final stitch. So we've now reached our last two stitches. We're going to simple the yarn over, then yarn over our hook for our increase, and work our last stitch. Now we can do our return pass, which starts with a chain one, then yarn over, pull through two, two, and two, until you've got one loop left on your hook. So we're gonna repeat rows seven and eight two times, and then repeat row seven once more. Make sure you check out the pattern to see what the repeat is. Complete through row 13, and join me back here for row 14. Alrighty, welcome back. So I have completed up to row 13 in the pattern. Alrighty, welcome back. So I have completed up to row 13 in the pattern. And if you've ever wondered how to count your rows in Tunisian crochet, here is my easy peasy tip. I'm going to look at the right edge. Here on the right edge, you're gonna see these little Vs, and each of these Vs counts as one row. So we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 Vs, which means I have 13 rows. Here in row 14 of the pattern, we're instructed to work in the honeycomb pattern row one for 13 stitches. If we look under special stitches, the honeycomb pattern row one alternates simple stitch for one, purl stitch for one. So we're gonna do that for 13 stitches. So here's what that looks like. We're gonna simple the next stitch, that's one. Purl the following stitch, that's two. Simple one for three, here's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and one more simple stitch makes thirteen. And then it says to Tunisian simple stitch each stitch to the last stitch. We're already at the last stitch, so we won't need to do that part on this row. And then we're instructed to yarn over, which is our increase, and then work our last stitch. So I'm making sure I get under both loops of that last stitch. Yarn over, pull up the loop. Now we're going to chain one and do our return pass. For row 15, we're going to work in our honeycomb pattern row two for 13 stitches. Now honeycomb pattern row two starts with a purl one followed by a simple one. So let's do that for 13 stitches. Starting with the purl one, skipping this first vertical bar, going into the next stitch, and that's one stitch. Simple the next for two stitches. Purl the following for three. Here's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
here's 12 and 13. Now for the remainder of that row, it says to simple stitch each stitch to the last stitch. So we have two stitches left here. We have our yarn over, the bar of that yarn over is right here, and we have our last stitch. So we're going to simple stitch that yarn over. Now we're at the last stitch, so we'll follow that with a yarn over, as it says in the pattern, and work our last stitch. Then we'll chain one, yarn over, pull through two, and through two until we have one loop left on our hook. And that's what your project should look like at the end of row 15. So let's do the next two rows together. So we're repeating row 14. Again, it starts with honeycomb pattern row one, which begins with a simple stitch. And we're going to work in that honeycomb pattern for 13 stitches. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So let's take a look at what we have still. We've got a vertical bar here, so there's a stitch. We also have our yarn over, and we have our last stitch. So in the instructions, it says to simple stitch to the last stitch. So we have two stitches before the last stitch, so we're gonna simple each of the next two stitches. So here's one and two. Now we're at the last stitch. We'll yarn over for our increase and work our last stitch and complete our return pass. Our repeat of row 15 starts with a purl stitch followed by a simple stitch, working that pattern for 13 stitches. So we'll purl the next, there's three, here's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, here's 12, and 13. Again, we have several stitches before our last stitch. We have one, two, in our yarn over, then our final stitch. So we'll simple each of these stitches until we get to our last stitch. Follow that with a yarn over, and then work our last stitch. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until there's just one loop left on your hook. Ah, this return pass is just literally the best. It's my favorite part of Tunisian crochet. There we go. We've got our honeycomb stitch pattern here on the far right. And then on the left hand side, you can see this simple stitch pattern starting to emerge. So you'll want to repeat rows 14 and 15 until you have 117 rows. Your shawl will be about 42 inches at this point. So measuring from here straight up the side, your shawl should be about 42 inches before we move on to the next row. Continue working on your shawl until you reach 42 inches. I'm going to put a few more rows on this sample and then join me back here. I'll show you how we do the final border rows here along the top and finish off our shawl. I've made some progress on my small sample. So if you recall, we kind of stopped working together here where we just had all of that beautiful honeycomb stitching happening. Now, as we continue in our stitch pattern, all of the increases will continue to be Tunisian simple stitch. So you'll have this band of honeycomb stitch going down the right side of your shawl, but the whole rest of it will be this gorgeous sea of simple stitch. So let's pretend for a moment that I have worked all the rows for the body of my shawl. And the last thing I need to do are the rows for the border. So the body of the shawl stops at row 117, which is where we would measure that 42 inches from the start all the way up to our working row, should be about 42 inches. And then rows 118 and 119, all the way through row 127, will be our border. And it's basically just gonna be another band of honeycomb stitch there at the top of our work. So let me tighten down and we'll do a few rows of that together. For row 18, we're instructed to work in our honeycomb pattern row one to the last two stitches. So just like before, honeycomb pattern row one starts with a simple stitch and is then followed by a purl stitch. Simple and purl. 
simple and purl. Now before we've been working this stitch pattern for just a few stitches, but instead we're going to work this stitch pattern all the way across the row. So here we have kind of this simple stitch section, but we're gonna continue in our honeycomb pattern. So simple, purl, simple, purl, until there are two stitches left in the row. Sorry for that noise, it's just the cord tapping against the counter. So there's our purl. Now we have two stitches left, our yarn over and our final stitch. So we're going to simple stitch the yarn over always. We're always going to simple stitch the yarn over as we're working this top border. Follow that with a yarn over and work our final stitch as normal. For our return pass, we chain one, yarn over, pull through two until there's one loop left on the hook. So we've got one loop left on our hook now. And for row 19, we're gonna work in our honeycomb pattern row two until those last two stitches. So honeycomb pattern row two starts with a purl stitch and is followed by a simple purl and simple. And this is where it really starts getting easy because we know that we're just going to purl our simple stitches and simple our purl stitches all the way across, whereas before we had to count. But this is really the easy part. So after that last purl, we have our two stitches left, our yarn over and our final stitch. Always simple stitch that yarn over. Then we're going to yarn over and do our last stitch here. So we can already see that honeycomb stitch pattern starting to emerge along the top. Repeat this for eight more rows. So alternating those honeycomb rows one and two for eight more rows. We have 10 total rows in our top border. I'm gonna step away and do a few more rows here at the top and then I'll show you how we're going to bind off. I added maybe six rows in my honeycomb stitch pattern, but you can already see that you've got this beautiful right angle and the whole thing is framed by this gorgeous honeycomb stitch and the center is gonna be that super meditative, nice, squishy Tunisian simple stitch. So the last thing that you'll need to do as far as actually working on your shawl is doing the bind off. All of these stitches here are still live and we know that because there's space between and behind the stitches. So let me tighten down and I'll show you how we'll bind off in pattern. Now when I say bind off in pattern, essentially we're going to maintain our honeycomb stitch pattern, but instead of doing actual Tunisian stitches, we're going to do slip stitches instead. So that's gonna allow us to bind off our project while still maintaining the look of this pattern. So in our honeycomb stitch pattern, we've got a purl stitch here at the beginning. So we would simple stitch this stitch. So I'm gonna insert, as for simple stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, but then I'm going to pull it through the remaining loop that's on my hook. So that's one stitch bound off. Now the next stitch in our honeycomb stitch pattern would be a purl. So we're pulling the yarn to the front, inserting as for the purl stitch, completing as for the purl stitch, and then again, pulling through the loop that's remaining on our hook. Simple the next stitch and complete the slip stitch, purl the following stitch and complete the slip stitch. You wanna keep your tension fairly loose here because just like slip stitches in traditional crochet, they can get very tight and you don't want any tightness there on the bottom of your shawl. So I'm purling this stitch and pulling through for the slip stitch simple the following stitch and pull through as a slip stitch. So let me show you what we've got here. Essentially we have this beautiful edge here at the top with all these gorgeous V's and the bind off row looks exactly like the body of our honeycomb stitch. So I'm gonna finish up across the row here. And now we have our yarn over and our final stitch left. So I'm going to work my yarn over just like a simple stitch and pull through. And then for my last stitch, I'm going under both of those loops just like normal. Yarn over, pull up a loop 
and pull through that final stitch. You'll notice that I did not add a yarn over because on my bind off row, I don't wanna do any increases. So at this point, I can fasten off and we'll want to weave in our ends. I'll show you how I like to do it with Tunisian crochet. So if we look at the back of our work here, we can see we have all these beautiful little bumps and they hold an end of yarn perfectly. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to go to the loop just underneath where I fastened off and go through there. And then at this point, I'm going to start finding bumps on the back of my work to start weaving my end through. And I'm going to go in a few different directions. This is not a straightforward journey. And the reason I don't go in too many straight lines is because straight lines are easy to work yarn out of. Instead, I like to go in a few curvy lines and that really locks in the yarn a whole lot better. And I don't have to worry about through the blocking process or the wearing process, my ends coming out. So there's one end done. I've got one on the other side, but you'll likely have several ends that you'll want to weave in similar to this. And again, I'm going to a loop that's just underneath where this end is and start going in a few different directions to weave in that end. So I'm gonna go here. Let's go sideways a little. This isn't a very long end, so I don't have too far I can go. I'll just pop the hook out there or pop the needle out, put the yarn back in and pull through just like that. And that end can stay right there. For all intents and purposes, your shawl is done. But as you can see, we've got a little bit of curling here that we should really be able to straighten out. We want to flatten things out along this top edge as well. And then down here on the bottom, we don't really want this crescent shape. We should be able to achieve a nice right triangle. So that's why we'll want to block our piece. Mine is made of animal fibers and will block beautifully with wet blocking. If you made yours with acrylic fiber, you might want to go with steam blocking. Honestly, use whatever method you like to get the shape that you essentially want. But that, my friends, is the Lay Me A Wrap. All right, loves, I really hope you enjoyed starting your Lay Me A Wrap with me today. As you continue, please post your progress on Instagram using hashtag Lay Me A Wrap and upload your projects to Ravelry so I can check them out there. 2022 is gonna be a really big year for TL Yarn Crafts. I have so many fun projects planned, but I would always love to know what you wanna see. Drop down in the comments and let me know what pattern I could design just for you. And hopefully in the next few months, you'll see it right here. In the meantime, you can check out this playlist for even more free patterns and tutorials from TL Yarn Crafts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.